Hello, uh, give me some emojis if you can hear me. Okay, thank you. We'll get started in a few minutes. Let's uh, give some people time to uh, come in. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, first, uh, give me some emojis if you've used uh, Blender before. Okay, I do see a couple of you. Uh, very good. Um, now, uh, can you give me some emojis if uh, you have taken the universe courses before? Okay, so I see we've got a mix of some 
uh, people new to the way we do our courses and some people that have been through it already. Uh, I will try to go over some of the basics on that, on how to navigate the Google Classroom and our Discord. Um, the, uh, the best place to go for help would be the Discord. And I will uh, be getting into that uh, shortly on how to access that. Okay, first, uh, let me get my screen sharing going. And uh, I've got a short video that should uh, introduce you to uh, Blender and how to get it set up. My viewport always gets stuck behind that when I first open it. Hey, can everybody see my screen? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play this. And uh, just give me some emojis if you have any problems hearing it. Let's talk about Blender. Blender is a 3D software that operates with polygons. You can do a wide range of tasks with it, including but not limited to 3D modeling, animation, texturing, rendering, and much, much more. We will talk about Blender more in the next session, but for now, we will be talking about how to access it. Now let us talk about how you can access Blender. You have one of three ways of downloading Blender and installing it on your device. If you're using Windows, Macintosh, or Linux, Blender is available for you regardless. It is an open source and free software, which means that you have an incredibly easy time downloading and installing it to whichever device you wish. The only thing it is not available for are mobile devices. Though technically, if you know how to program, you can compile it for said mobile devices. So what are the three ways of downloading Blender? You have Steam, Microsoft Store, and via the old fashioned way of downloading and installing it from an online website. Let's start with the first version. If you are running a Windows device, that is Windows 8.1 or greater, you can open up the Microsoft Store. At the top, you will type in Blender. Here, you have the ability to download Blender as it is, or you can download Blender 2.93 LTS, which is actually the one we wish to install. Blender 2.93 LTS is Blender 2.93 long-term service. This means Blender under this version will constantly receive new and lifetime updates. Long-term service or lifetime service is actually what it stands for. So here you can go to the top right corner and click get if that is available to you. If you have gotten this before and uninstalled it, you will have an install button located here. Next, you will want to click install. And now, Blender has been installed on my device. From here, I can click open. And as you can see, it has downloaded and installed Blender and that is now available for me to use. Now, if you do not have a Windows device, you can install it through Steam if you have Steam downloaded. I will not walk you through the process of downloading Steam 
but I will walk you through the process of getting it from Steam. So if we go to store featured, we go to search, we can look up Blender and it will state that it is free. Down below, you will have a button here that says free. This is the button that you would want to click to download Blender. Upon doing so, it will ask you if you'd like to install it. At this point, click cancel. Instead, go up to library and navigate to Blender in your list of favorites or in your categorized list of all possible programs you can download. From here, what you will do is right click and go to properties. When you go to properties, you will be met with a new menu that says general, updates, betas, and controller. If you click on beta, click the drop down, which it will state none, and navigate down to 2.93 stable LTS. At this point, when you close this menu, it should now say Blender 2.93. At this point, you can click Install. It will ask if you'd like to install it under a particular location. For me, C drive is perfectly fine. Steam will then handle the download and updates Once Steam has downloaded and installed Blender, you will be able to see that it is available for launch. Launching Blender from Steam is simple. And now Blender is installed and ready to use. The next and final option for downloading Blender is by navigating to the website. So when you go to blender.org slash download, you will be met with a page that allows you to download Blender 3.0.1. This is not the version that we want. Instead, down below, you will see looking for Blender LTS. This is where we wish to go. By clicking on that, we have the options of Blender 2.93 LTS or 2.83 LTS. On the left-hand side, we will click Blender 2.93 LTS. Here, we will be met with the long-term support availabilities, which are Windows Store, Steam, and Snap, if you use Linux. There are other ways of downloading it on Linux as well, but for the sake of brevity, we are only going to be talking about these first two options and the downloads that are down below. Underneath the change log, you will see a variety of long-term service or long-term support releases that you are able to download. The most recent one is 2.93.8. Here we can download Linux version, Mac OS Intel version, Mac OS Apple Silicon version, the Windows installer, or the Windows Portable. The Windows Portable can be installed onto a USB drive and taken around wherever you need. For Windows devices, you would want most likely to get the installer. For Apple, if you have an Apple Silicon chip, you will want to download this one. And if you are running Apple Intel, you will want to download this one. For me, I will download the Windows installer. And the bottom left-hand corner, Blender will be downloaded on Chrome. Once downloaded, you will be able to launch your executable, accept the terms in the license agreement. After clicking next, 
you will have the ability to designate a new location for downloading and installing Blender. And you will have the ability to designate which kinds of features you wish to have. By default, keeping everything installed is fine. Installing it in the main program files, Blender Foundation, Blender 2.93 is quite fine. If you're running Macintosh, you will need to drag and drop it into your applications prompt. After clicking Next and then clicking Install, the installer will then walk through copying new files into its proper location and allowing you to launch Blender after it is done installing. After you click Finish, Blender should be available for you to launch. And as you can see, Blender is up and running. We recommend using Steam to download and receive continued Blender updates as it is the most flexible and malleable installer location. And that is it for this video. I will see you in class. Okay, that should have ended for everybody. Okay, so uh, that goes through the steps of installing Blender. Uh, the other tools that uh, we will we use in this class are uh, the Discord server and the Google Classroom. And I'm assuming everybody has uh, been on the Google Classroom. Can you give me emojis if you have not seen the Google Classroom? Okay, very good. And um, can you give me emojis if you have not joined the Blender, or not Blender, the uh, Discord server? Okay, good. It seems everybody is on the Discord server. Right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull over the Discord server here. So, um, just in case any of you all have, are not able to see the 3D modeling section on our Discord server, if you go up to the top in the welcome section, uh, you can see here to get the Blender artist, you need to respond with the D. Um, response. So click on this so that it is outlined in blue and you will be able to see the blender uh, blender photos. And also on Discord, if you have not already, uh, please set your uh, server specific nickname uh, to match your Google Classroom name so that I will be able to know who each of you are. Okay, and uh, any questions on Discord or the Google Classroom? And I apologize for the dog. Uh, somebody just left the house and he's sad. Okay, uh, very good. Right. A uh, few notes on some of the things that we will be going over in this course. Um, uh, in this course, we will teach you the basics of 3D terminology. 
uh, the general workflow of box modeling, as well as texturing your 3D models. Uh, and you, during the course of the class, you will learn how to create your own 3D models from reference images, as well as with your imagination with Blender. Uh, you will learn how to navigate Blender's user interface. Um, watch, uh, you will watch demonstrations about how to interact with Blender. Uh, you will understand the basics of adding objects, manipulating those objects, and the terms related to this workflow of manipulating those objects. Uh, you will learn how to UV map and texture your models. And by the end of the course, you will have built a minimum of five independent 3D models. Uh, learn to UV map at least two of those models and textured at least one of those models. This course does assume that you have no previous experience with 3D modeling in Blender. Uh, so students of all, uh, all levels are welcome and should uh, have no problem succeeding in this. Okay. And uh, any, any questions so far? Uh, you should be able to either unmute or just type in the chat for those questions. Okay. Let me. Welcome to Universe's intro. Introduction to modeling with Blender. Did not mean to play it again. And I thought I had a different window up there. We we did prepare a quiz to help you get more familiar with some of the things we have already gone over. Uh, give me just a moment to get that pulled back up. I had accidentally closed it. Okay, and let me also turn on the quiz controls here. And I'm not sure if everybody is familiar with uh, our new way of running our classes in spatial. Uh, some of you I have seen in alt space, but I do not know if you have uh, visited our spatial classroom before. Uh, with the quizzes, uh, we've made them a little bit more interactive. If you look behind, <laughs> you, uh, you can see some areas uh, for you to walk to, uh, to uh, for your answer to each of these questions. Uh, so let's start off. Uh, which version of Blender are we using? Go to the A if we're going to be using 6.1, B for 2.79, C for 2.93 LTS, or D for 3.0. Okay, and going to reveal in three, two, one, and indeed, yes, the answer is C. I see it is not lighting up. It means I do need to reload the space. So give me just one moment here.
Okay, much better. It is working now. So uh, I saw most of you uh, were on C, so very good. So to the next question. Okay, uh, Blender is compatible with which operating system? Is it A, Mac, B, Linux, C, Windows, or D for all of the above? Okay, and pretty overwhelming response, and you all are absolutely correct. It is D, all of the above. Okay, and Blender is what? As in, what type of software is it? Is it a game engine, a video editing software? Is it used to make juice, or is it a modeling software with extra features. Okay, Let's see there's a little bit of movement still. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. And yes, indeed, it is modeling software with extra features. Okay, how can you install Blender? Can you do it at A, the Microsoft Store, Snap Store, Steam, manually or manually through the website, or B, with a repair technician, C, with an installation disk, or D with a zip file that Universe provides. And Marie, if you're stuck in that corner, try double clicking on the stairs uh, just slightly below you. Okay, I see you got out. And revealing in three, two, one. And yes, the answer is A. Uh, the Microsoft Store, Snap Store, Steam, or manually through the website. I imagine somewhere there might be an installation disk, but I have not personally seen an installation disk in years. <laughs> okay. Um, what this one uh, you might not know just yet, but we will go over it. What is the outliner? Is the outliner a file used to keep track of objects? Or B, a mode that allows you to modify your scene? Or C, a window that displays all relative assets in the scene? Or D, a tool to use to highlight objects? And I know these are new concepts, so I don't expect everybody to be certain on this one. Okay, going to reveal in three, two, one. And the answer is C. It is a window that displays all relative assets in the scene. Uh, if you're familiar with Unity, this is uh, similar to the hierarchy window. And let me switch my screen over to Blender here. And this area right up here is that outliner window. It uh, shows you in this particular scene, all I have 
is a camera, a cube, and a light source. But this does display everything that is currently in my scene. Okay. Um, what is a modifier and where do you access it? Is it a number that is applied to a material to change its properties accessed by a right click? A B, a block of code used to modify a model found in the scripting tab? C, an asset that changes its shape based on certain conditions found in the animation tab? Or D, a tool that temporarily changes your asset and is located in the modifier panel? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and reveal in three, two, one. And yes, the answer is D. Very good. Uh, it is a tool that temporarily changes your assets and is located in the modifier panel. Uh, we will make heavy use of modifiers as we go along in the course. And uh, to switch back to our Blender tab here, the modifiers live over here in the modifier properties. So you can see there are uh, several modifiers available. Like one, for example, is the bevel modifier. And if you saw in the cube that beveled all of the edges of the cube since I had the entire cube selected. And you can change the amount of bevel the number of segments in the bevel to make it smoother. Okay, and these are all temporary changes until I apply them. And you can easily turn them uh, on and off. Uh, this is for renderer mode. This is for the design mode. So they are not permanent changes until you apply them. Okay, and I know I've gone through a few questions here and I have not asked for any, if you all have any questions. So at this time, if uh, things are still making sense for you, give me some emojis. If you have any questions, uh, please ask. Okay, uh, we'll continue to the next question. Okay. Where is the 3D viewport located in Blender? Is it A, the default camera location, uh, B, the 3D scene that is by default in the center of the screen, C, the window open by clicking on the 3D menu, or D, the panel at the top right of the screen. Okay, going to reveal in three, two, one. And the answer is B, the 3D scene that is by default in the center of the screen. And the correlation, if uh, you have worked in Unity, to this one is the scene view. And the 3D viewport is this large area in which you can see all of the elements of your scene or your model.
Okay, emojis of things are still making sense and uh, ask if you have any questions. Okay, how do you access the UB editing tools? Okay, this is going to be a rough one for you right now, but by the end of the course, it'll be a uh, old hat. Do you A, press the X button at the top right corner of your window? B, click into the UV editing tab at the top of Blender? C, using the drop down menu named Edit? Or D, right click anywhere in the scene and select it from the pop up menu? Okay, and some of you must have done this before because yes, the answer is B. Click on the UV editing tab at the top of Blender. Okay, let me switch back over here. And this is the UV editing tab right here that is speaking of. When you go into that, it's in UV editing mode, which shows you uh, the flattened version of your model so that you can uh, more easily control and apply your textures. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, how do you rotate the camera in the 3D scene? Do you do it A, middle mouse click and drag? B, use the I, J, K, L keys? C, press Q and then click and drag? Or D, use the arrow keys on your numpad? Okay, I'm going to reveal in three, two, one. And yes, it is A. Uh, you use the middle mouse to click and drag. Uh, there are quite a few hotkeys for Blender, and we will be using them extensively. But for something like rotating the camera, uh, using the mouse is still uh, the preferred way to do that. Okay, how do you pan the camera in the 3D scene? You A, use the arrow keys. B, shift and middle mouse click and drag. C, press W and then click and drag. Or D, use WASD keys. Okay, and revealing in three, two, one. And yes, the answer is B. You hold down shift and then middle mouse click and drag. Okay, uh, what is the best way to get quick help? Is it A, using our Discord, B, email? C, the Google Classroom, or D, the website chat box? Okay, and going in revealing in three. Okay, and yes, it is A, the Discord. As the other method, methods can possibly get uh, information to us. Um, 
the preferred method by far is the Discord, uh, the Google Classroom, and the website chat box are probably pretty much tied for the uh, least preferred methods. Uh, the website chat box, because it's really not its intended use, and we're not looking there for questions. Uh, Google Classroom might be seem surprising to some of you that it's a bad way to contact us. However, unless you are submitting assignments, it is uh, very easy for us to miss a comment that somebody leaves in the Google Classroom. So it's uh, sometimes days before we notice that somebody has left a comment for us in Google Classroom when it's not related to submitting an assignment. So please uh, use the Discord, uh, use either the public channels in the uh, 3D modeling section, or you can uh, also direct message me and I will uh, get back to you. I've got Discord on my phone, and if I'm awake, I'm checking Discord. Okay. Uh, where do you submit your work? Do you A, send a private message to the instructor, B, through Google Classroom, C, through email, or D, through Discord? Okay, and go ahead and reveal, and yes, it is B. Submitting your work is done through Google Classroom. Um, you are also encouraged to share your work uh, by posting in Discord, but to submit your work uh, so that we can grade it, it does need to be done in Google Classroom. Okay, and I believe that was the, yes, that was the last question for the quiz. Okay, uh, so at this point, does if anybody have any questions for me. How do you pronounce your name? Um, my uh, in-game name is Searness. Searness. Yeah. Do we call you Searness or John? Uh, I've been using Searness so long that I'll answer to either. Okay. I've uh, been using Searness online for more than 20 years now. <laughs> Okay, um, any other questions? Can you show some us some uh, uh, can you show us some examples of what students have built in this classroom? Okay, uh, let's see. I will get that uh, together and I will share that. I do not uh, have that completely together right now. Uh, if we were still in Altspace, I could have loaded into things, but unfortunately, when Altspace shut down, we lost access to the worlds that we featured the student submissions in. But I will, uh, I will get something together and put it on the Discord. Okay, and uh, the, uh, the basic projects, uh, you're going to start off by modeling a, uh, a wine bottle based on a reference image. And a lot of the assignments are going to be centered around various stages of building a treasure chest. Uh, and then along the way, you will also uh, build things like mushrooms, uh, street signs, and I know I am forgetting one or two. Let me. See if I can pull up some things to refresh myself on that. Are we doing a coffee cup? Um, the videos for the coffee cup. We were not able to recover still. Uh, I 
do want to try to get something together for that. So um, that's still that is still pending. It won't be with that same video, but uh, I would like to do something like a coffee cup. Are we going to do a structure like a house or and, something like that? A small house? Uh, you can do a small house. I've got an example of a very simple house that I use in uh, one of the future lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, there's really not much to that house, but it is a very, a very simple house. But um, if you're wanting to build a, a larger house that you can walk around in, uh, that is certainly something you can do as one of your extra projects. And I will help you along the way as you're doing that. Uh, we're uh, sticking to smaller, simpler models to explain the concepts in, in the coursework. Thank you. You're welcome. And let's see. Okay, I did mention the traffic sign. I'm just going through sign some of, of the... Sign of, would it be something like a piece of furniture? Um, it, uh, we didn't do a piece of furniture, but we certainly could go over a piece of furniture at some point. Might be thinking of the uh, the mushroom assignment, but I did mention the mushroom, didn't I? Mm-hmm. And as far as the building, there is a video that shows uh, the outside of a rather large building. Uh, that is uh, for some demonstration purposes, and uh, so we don't ask you to to build that as a homework assignment. But you will see how to how to build that. Okay, for this week though, uh, the homework is uh, is fairly simple, and I will be posting it after class. Uh, you just need to install. Blender uh, 2.93, and there will be a cube object already in the scene. So uh, we want you to uh, save that uh, that cube file as a blend, a dot blend file, and then submit a screenshot of Blender and of the 3D model. Uh, you will get some extra points if you experiment with things such as lights adding other objects, uh, editing the, the vertices or edges or, uh, or the faces, or even adding a material. And uh, let me pull up Blender again. Yep, I'm making sure I did still share. And the vertices are each of these. Let me uh, remove this. And go back into layout mode. Actually, I want to go into edit mode. Uh, the vertices are the corners, the single points. Edges are the lines that connect the vertices. And the faces are the areas between all of the edges. and manipulating them. Hitting the wrong button here, sorry. You can either use these tools on the side or I use the hot key, which is the uh, move key. And if you hit the button itself, you get a uh, directional indicators allowing you to move it as you wish. 
and uh, just experiment around with these different tools, see what they do, see what happens to models as you do them. See, not much happens when you rotate a vertice. If I go to an edge and rotate, something very different happens. So experiment around a little bit, uh, get it installed, and then submit a screenshot of your Blender window installed and uh, save the Blend file and submit the Blend file to the Google Classroom. Okay, there, are there any questions on the assignment? Okay, uh, Tanu indicated that I might have forgotten to mention the wine bottles, but I think I did mention those. You did. Okay. Or I might have misunderstood what she's saying. I, I did. Uh, she was actually telling me she found pictures of the wine bottles. So let me get that to pop out here. Okay, and these are uh, some of the submissions for the wine bottles that we received. Uh, the first one on the edge is actually my bottle. And then uh, we had four students that submitted uh, very different bottles, one of which actually uh, modeled some wine glasses and uh, cork as well. And uh, we will try to get more of these examples as we go along. Okay, I okay. do. Are there any Good other day, questions? And uh, again, I want to say congratulations. I saw a lot of great projects on this course. I did not mean to click there. And I found myself outside of the box. Let's see, Tanu, I think she found a video as well. So let's uh, play that. This is one of the uh, the classes that we ran uh, the first time through, and she gave me twenty nine. Okay, and these are some of the treasure chests and the road signs. Giving everybody a few minutes to get in here.
Okay, I think we have everybody. And Pete, your head is almost the exact same color as the mountain over there. <laughs> I thought you loaded in with that your head for a second. No, headless Pete. <laughs> Visibility. Visibility cloak activated. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, if you, uh, we want to move down the line. Let's see, Wendy. I'm here. I thought you were. You know, Wendy's got a, a nice little collection of uh, objects here. I really like the way that you uh, textured your mushrooms. I think this is the first time I'm seeing those with that texture applied. Yeah, I was trying to find something polka dot-ish. <laughs> oh. But yeah. Oh, and then the, the treasure chest with the teal aqua. It didn't, it doesn't look right to me like I wanted it. I was hoping it was a deeper teal, but. Does it yeah. look different in uh, Under than it did in Unity? Oh, definitely, yeah. It like, it was transparent in um, Unity. It was weird. It hmm. Turned out weird. Yeah. Because in somebody the else had that problem and then they had to reload it in Unity to look on um, uh it was one of mine when chelsea was grading it uh it was mm -hmm. transparent like i had the inside faces out and That's then we found a setting mm -hmm. and we found a setting that corrected it remember which setting that was <laughs> uh, the setting was in blender it was in unity in unity it was a setting in unity because the blender file was correct um okay i think chelsea mm -hmm. mike's not working today mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. I don't know if Kelsey remembers it. what that um, setting was. Actually, it was uh, when you're looking at to go in down. Uh, next time when the class goes through, I'll probably take this class again just to get a little bit better at, with the blender. Uh, I'm definitely going to do a bigger personal project. So. so, but with two courses running at the same time, it was kind of juggling both. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'd I definitely get that. <laughs> okay, and uh, now Peggy's chest. Okay, for some reason I thought we had Peggy here. Um, Peggy's uh, is also one that you had seen uh, previously. Uh, this is the version. All of these are the versions that uh, that you all made the uh, Unity packages for. Uh, so this is uh, the, the version of her chest as she pulled it in uh, to Unity. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, Laura's is the, the same way. Yeah, I'm going to skip ahead again. <laughs> I, thought at least, uh, I thought at least I could make a little um, gardening scene. And I started actually uh, by looking online. I found a video about how the traditional craft of bug making, um, which uh, I thought was a nice sort of analogy for the, the craft of blender that we were learning as well. So uh, I started with the trug. It, it, it is the proper sort of structure, but uh, it's, it's quite small. It's difficult to see. It might be worth going close to have a look because there's quite a lot of detail in it. Um, but Let me see it's if I can a, do something about that while you're talking about it. Uh, yeah, it it's, very um, She's it's a bit sort of rough and ready, and, and it's very simple. It's just uh, modeled my, my own method and then simple materials applied. Um, and the apples I was really pleased with, I, I did them early on. And they're just a simple, um, more or less a simple sphere. Thank you. Uh, with um, just a texture sort of from a supermarket, I think. Actually, let me from raise it up a little. A oh. Yeah, that, that, that's great. That's fine. Uh, the um, watering can was the hardest thing because it's got all those junctions in the mesh, and I tried to do it properly. 
and I was trying to keep low poly as well. So you can see it's it's a little bit angular, uh, but it would have been even more angular because that was the first one that I, but I actually did, I modeled the watering can and then I applied, a, I, I duplicated it and applied this uh, um, subdivision surface or whatever it's called to make it higher poly. And then I um, baked the, the map of that uh, and then applied it back to the lower poly model, which is something I think Nira was talking about. And, and um, I, I think it worked pretty well. I think I did that on the pears as well. And the, the sweet corn the corn on the cob, that's all, um, that, that's all just texture for the corn. It's just a simple cylinder. So, um, Yes, there was quite a lot, quite a lot to doing it, but um, uh, I was pleased to get it done. And I also want to add my thanks both to John. It must have been so difficult taking over. You know, we did get off to a bit of a shaky start, and um, you've been so sort of patient and explained things so nice and clearly, and very responsive and and kind in your comments. Very, very grateful to you, Nira. Um, your input, it, it, it's been brilliant, and I felt it really sort of fit. The text in the middle is actually an emissive map. Oh. And I don't, I don't know if it's turned up very far on here, and it's, that's my fault. I did not tell Tanu, so Tanu might not have turned on the emissive part. Uh, but it, it did look very nice when, you know, it was shining like it was backlit. Ah. Good. Neat. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's part of it. And I'll probably be reaching out to you next round to, on. you know, maybe actually, give a few tips yeah, on the. Uh, 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 sorry, I was talking over myself. The uh, that model. Uh, I'll see if I can find that sooner later. She created an entire traffic sign, and then that was the crosswalk portion of that traffic light. So I think that got uh, most of the models in here. Okay. Um, yeah, Chelsea had taken a another class that taught her how to make a chess set. Uh, so she submitted that as her extra project along with the uh, the chest. Okay, and well, Starbucks. Bad place for that, but that is a Starbucks trash can. And so there will be lots of opportunity to make uh, various uh, models. Uh, each week you're encouraged to create a model of your own as well as the uh, model detail in the assignment. And uh, any any questions at this point? Okay, and uh, let me see if I can find the syllabus to pull the syllabus up here. It probably would have been useful for me to do earlier or talking about the various models that we would make. Uh, sorry, I've got a lot of tabs open and I know I just had that open. And there we go. And this is available on the Google Classroom in the uh, uh, course section. I actually switch off it for, for a second. In the course info, you can see the uh, syllabus as well as some frequently asked questions. And then it'll get, start getting down into the recordings and assignments.
So let me go back in here. And I wanted to talk briefly about our schedule. Okay, uh, for the first week, that is this week, we will, uh, is the uh, introduction to the course as well as installing the uh, software that we're going to be using. Okay, and uh, next week, we will start uh, by setting up uh, your first model. Uh, learn about uh, a little bit about the history, and we will create a scene that has multiple objects and learn to modify the geometry of those objects. And that'll be on the uh, 6th through the 12th. Uh, for week three, we will uh, get into modeling that wine bottle, and that'll be the first big project uh, that we will have. And hope that's when I'm hoping to be able to reintroduce the, the mug that was mentioned earlier. Okay. The Tony said it's a little small. Where is the magnifier in this? Let me just bring up the Windows system magnifier and do it that way. Okay, that should be easier to read. Okay, and um, for week four, uh, this is one point that I did want to go over. We will have our first break. Uh, it will be a, a two-week break, unfortunately. We tried to avoid it, uh, but there was no way for us to get around it. Uh, we will have a break the week of Memorial Day weekend and the weekend after I have a prior commitment, so I will uh, be unable to lead the class. So we will have a two-week break uh, within this time. Uh, the break, I believe, will be on May 20th, then the 27th, and then we will come back for June 9th. I believe that is how it's laid out. And I'll get more detail on that as we get closer. Uh, but when we do come back from that break, we will start on the uh, the treasure chest and more complex models. And then in week five, uh, we will expand on things and learn how to improve our surface quality and uh, learn about the workflow and uh, and that's when the traffic sign project and the mushrooms are introduced. And it will make more sense about the surface quality and how that affects the uh, uh, the lighting and various other things. Okay, and then uh, we will start on UV mapping. The uh, first week for the UV mapping is uh, going to be a very simple, quick, and dirty version that, for most cases, will, will get the job done, but it will not produce the best result. Uh, the following week, uh, we will uh, go over a more detailed, and uh, it's a little bit more time-consuming, sometimes a lot more time-consuming, but it does produce a lot better results and you get more consistent results when you export your models to other programs. Okay, and uh, that also will be in our second uh, or our third break week uh, for the 4th of July holiday. And then when we come back, uh, we will continue the UV uh, layout mapping. And uh, this will add texturing to that mapping and we'll be able to uh, more precisely lay out our textures and uh, apply them to them to our models okay. and then uh, for the next week uh, we will learn how to take our 3d models out of blender and put them in unity so we can use them in other projects 
and then uh, that is going to be the final uh, uh, content week, and then the next week will be graduation. Okay. And I know that was kind of a whirlwind overview of the course. Uh, are there any uh, any questions about that that you may have? Okay. So let me uh, see if I can get a uh, portal open so we can visit a uh, world and kind of uh, chat amongst ourselves. Give me one moment to look for that. Let me go ahead and stop sharing as well. Oh, there it is. Spatial is constantly updating and improving uh, their system. And so it took me a moment to find that space or that link to, to do the space. Okay, and uh, let me turn off the quiz system because I don't think that you all can click on it until I do. Right, just uh, click on that portal and it will take you to that world. I'll hang out here a moment to make sure that y'all are transferring. Take a lot of my my phone is hot. Hey Marie, how you doing? Hey, where you at? I'm on my cell phone. That's why it's all I'm all messed up here. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you. Yeah. We can hear you. <laughs> okay, this is nice. I like it. I go upstairs. Hello, can you hear me? Is John? It is different. 
Oh, I thought you said John. Said, that is another John, baby. This is John. Where did I go? <laughs> what in the world? Yeah, how did I wind up over here? I I really. <laughs> Marie, you swimming? <laughs> oh, is that where I'm at? I'm in the water? <laughs> I don't know. It looks like you were swimming. <laughs> Trying Doing... to figure out where to check. Okay. Yeah, I have to get used to this on the cell phone. It's a little different. Oh, that's right. We can go upstairs. Oh. Ooh, fell down. I guess they didn't want to put colliders on. Nice, I like it. Are we able to put bring in um um uh, oh my god, why can't I think of the name of it? Um gosh. You know the particle systems. Particle systems. Are we able to bring those in over here? I saw some water, but Mm hmm Okay. 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 So, Tandu, I guess you need to tell us about your world. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. <laughs> so, did you build it in... Um... Blender? Uh-huh. Great job. I don't know how to sit down <laughs> with my cell phone. It won't let me sit down. No, on my cell phone, it only has like a little, two little dots. One is for jumping, and the other one, you either press it forward, backward, right, or left. And it doesn't give me any type of, like a, you know, a signal to go and sit down or anything. I don't know why it, yeah. it, it 
Yeah, so, that's why I was looking crazy in class. <laughs> if you so when you try right to push place, it, you should be yeah. able to sit down. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was looking bone. like. This is okay. I'm pushing forward, and then this is me tapping that. But when I tap this side, I just start jumping. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. I guess. I don't go know. go to a couch and and move it forward and see if you see an anchor light up. Okay. Hold on, let me plug my phone up. This takes a lot of battery power on your phone. Yeah, you on the phone, you won't really see an anchor. Uh, I've been muted this whole time and talking my head oh. off. <laughs> I apologize, <laughs> but everybody thought I just went silent on you. Um, yep. <laughs> we thought you went to the bathroom. <laughs> the, uh, when you're on the phone, if you tap in the middle of the screen away from those buttons and you hit the right hot spot on it, you should be able to sit down. Uh, you can also teleport Hold that on. way, too. Okay, let me see. It might take a double tap. Okay, I'm going to... Um... Is this a seat right... Oops, nope. Right here. Behind me. Right here. You try that one. Okay. I just came off of that one. Okay, and you said do what now? Press double tap the on top of the... it. Yeah. Oh, you okay. Thank you. <laughs> now, Tanu, you yeah, said you did. Yeah, one of the things did... I mentioned. Oh no! Go I was ahead. Say, one of the things I mentioned when I was uh, muted is I used, I've used the uh, cell phone app quite a bit as, as well. Yeah. I use it on uh, Sundays when I want to check in on how classes are going. Mm -hmm. I'm this is my first time. On Sundays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the skybox, Tanu. How did you said you did some? Did you take a normal picture? And, and like, did you have to change the measurements or something in a, a Photoshop, you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Great job. Oh, who, me? Oh, no, I got this from... It was um, actually, for some reason, it was in my, um, the options for the clothes. And then when I went back to try to make it, I think it was from Ready Player Me. And when I went back to try to do another avatar for a different platform, they wouldn't let me, it wasn't there anymore. So I don't know, hmm. I tried to have this for a VR chat as well, but they wouldn't allow me to get it again. So I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. No. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I haven't messed with the uh, custom avatars in spatial yet, but it's. Uh, I'm waiting to see what pops up. <laughs> I haven't seen anything <laughs> too crazy yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> oh boy. You're doing pretty good, Tanya. I like this world.
No, I, I'm just really looking forward to getting comfortable with Blender and I've kind of tried to experiment on my own and um, I've struggled, so. Hmm. Have you have you ever used Blender for animation? Oh, that's cool. So if you export the animation, is it a GLB file or how do you export it over to Unity? So how yeah. if you animate it, how does that work? The animation gonna be attached to the FBX file? Yes. Oh, cool. I'm getting ready to experiment. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, uh, pretty much the same same things you just said. Uh, if not everything will transfer over, but animations is one thing that uh, the FPXs will uh, will take over. Um, cool. Like another example is something that was mentioned earlier: the particle effects here. Uh, Blender uses a different particle system than Unity, so the particle effects do not transfer over. Okay. Ah. Okay. Yeah, so you'll get an idea of what you need to do in each program mm -hmm. to, you know, to do your full projects. But uh, animation in Blender is, depending on the animation, it's better to do it in Blender. If you're doing complex animations like character movement, you know, walking, running, uh, you know, yeah. anything like that, Blender is the better tool. If it's simple animations, like you want things to slide back and forth, appear and disappear, and that kind of thing, then uh, the Unity animation system is just fine. Okay. You would think that particle effects were a type of animation. I know, yeah. it's. It would have been awesome if that's how it read it, how um, Unity read it from Blender. Yeah, particle, I don't know about Blender, but in uh, Unity, particle effects is uh, heavily affected by the physics engine. Uh, you're actually generating new objects, and those objects are being acted on by physics, and then uh, you've got certain mm -hmm. length of time for them to exist. So there is some animation involved in it, but a lot of it is done, you know, just through the physics interactions. That makes sense. Yeah. And really, particle effects is a deep dive I haven't done yet. 
every time I learn one thing, I find out there's 10 others I didn't, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a never ending process when it comes to learning this stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then that when you think sure. you know something, you don't. <laughs> You're like, oh, there are changes. Changes. Yeah. Yeah. I like to say that you don't really know anything about a subject until you ju realize just how much you don't know about it. <laughs> yeah, I agree. 100%. Marie, you want to go see my world? <laughs> Brought in the spatial. Okay. Oh, yeah, if you've got a spatial oh. world, I'd like to see it. Yeah. Okay, how do I do it? Y'all, would y'all do I put out a portal or y'all follow me? I don't know how this works. You might, not be, this. <laughs> you might not be able to put out a portal. Spatial seems to not like people putting portals in other people's spaces. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. If you. Uh, can everybody see the chat? Is anybody on the uh, on VR? Discord. No. If you're I on the you phone. Spatial. Yeah, if you're on the phone or a browser, oh. you can use the chat to uh, add a portal link. Oh, the chat. Yeah. Uh, okay. It says when I clicked on it, it just says say something. Is that yeah. the one you're talking about, or is it a group chat? Okay. Yeah, it's that chat. You paste in the link to the to the world and as long okay, I'm and, add it. as long as everybody is not in vr we will be able to follow it okay so let me ask you this really quick okay so if we did want to come in here oh oh that's me okay if we didn't want to come in here on the vr headset what do we click on to get to the class Okay, I'll, I'll be posting a video on that. It's uh, not a straightforward setup. Uh, you first want to come to, because uh, and the reason for that is the uh, we don't have public worlds. It's invite-only worlds for our worlds. Uh, okay. You come in the browser and favorite the, the world. And then when you go in the headset, you can search for the world. Either search for universe. Uh, or the name of the class, and uh, it should appear pretty high up in the search. Okay. Uh, but you want to come in and visit it and favorite it in uh, in the browser first. Gotcha. <laughs> and I've also set it up so that we will be using the same space every week. Oh, good. So that classroom that we were in, it'll be that same the same link every week. I'll change oh, the content okay. of the class a little bit for the quizzes, but the uh, the space itself is going to be the same link. Okay. Okay. I'll put it in the chat. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that'll help us to remember, too. Yeah, go ahead and uh, everybody click on the, on the link, and it'll take you yep. to it. It might take you to it in a different browser window, so you'll have to exit out of this one. Yeah, that's exactly what it did for me. <laughs> you got the food, Tanu. <laughs> now, John, this was a uh, okay. one I pull in from Sketchfab. I'm trying to figure out because this got some it's weird so, material, or whatever. I don't know if it's parsley, uh, what's it called photogrammetry or what. So. It it was weird. Sorry, I was leaving the other. You said there was something in photogrammetry. You maybe I, I, it's weird. I'm like fire. looking at like the the wood, and uh, even when I in Unity, it's supposed to be a line like the uh, Roig is on the floor, and it doesn't appear on the floor in here. It's just weird, and the tables yeah. look elevated in here, but it's not in Unity. So I oh. don't know. 
it's just I different. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. I see the wood, weird. the wood outside through the window is more textured than it is here inside. Well. Exactly. So I, I don't know. I didn't build it, so I don't. I got it from Sketch Fab. Is the car showing up out here? That one I decimated. Yes, yeah, out here. Okay. Oh, did you? I decimated the car to get it in here because it was heavy. Oh, was it? Huh. Yeah, it was heavy. It's, it looks like you did a good job decimating. Yeah, but I guess the inside, I put a collider so you supposedly can't get in it because you can see through it. I guess I decimated a little bit too much. <laughs> Oh, yeah, put it on the back. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I couldn't yeah, figure out how to get it on the front, but oh, well. <laughs> and you'll uh, you'll be learning about how you, you can see through from the inside uh -huh. uh, in Blender. Um, there are two types of faces. There's outside faces and inside faces. Uh -huh. And uh, we'll be going over how to tell them apart and then adjust your normals so that uh, you don't see any uh, inside faces. So do I have to solidify it it's, to do that? It's not, it's not solidifying. Um, okay. I hope not. <laughs> it's it's the, the direction of the faces is what it is. When you decimated, you might have gotten rid of the floorboard faces and you're just seeing the I inside. Think so too. Uh, of the uh, uh, of the bottom of the car, yep. Um, I think that might be what happened. What happened? Yeah, that's why I can put a collider on so nobody can get in there. <laughs> I didn't want nobody to go in there. <laughs> I did put some anchors in there, but I was like, nope. Yeah, and solidifying might help, but for a model as complete as this is, uh, solidifying will add a lot more to it. Yep. Yep. So that might not be the best best option. I, I'll, I would have to look at the model, which I'll be happy to do if you want me to. Okay, yeah. I've been holding on this car for uh, a year now. And I was like, oh, I probably could do something with it. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like this face. You know, you did find a nice, nice set of models. It was, you know, because it's an A-frame house, I had to put, um, try to put an invisible collider on it, and my positioning is terrible, because you can see it on the top. <laughs> I was trying to use oh, yeah. the, what is it, the rotate tool, and then I couldn't get it lined up right, so you can see it on the top. Yeah, I think I might see what you're... Yeah. That one panel that looks a little bit different color. Yeah, and then I had to put it on, and this is supposed to be translucent, but I guess you can still see it going up the stairs. Um, I tried. I have some more learning to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, for the, the stair ramp, that's, mm -hmm. that's a good solution. Uh, you should be able to make it fully transparent. I wonder yeah. if you didn't slide the alpha all the way over. I probably didn't. Probably didn't. Looks like I didn't. But I would have just thought that was part of the stairs if you didn't say anything. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I did this stair and then the one, the front stairs around here like that. Marie, you see my note on the door? <laughs> Oh, she's just sitting there. <laughs> yes, she might still be loading in. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh <my laughs> so you God. can't get I through the that. door. <laughs> that one. <laughs> and then I wrote, mm. as if the kids wrote this on the door <laughs> in front of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where am I? Why am I out here? Let me go back. Okay. I'm on your table. <laughs> you on my chair. Yep. I'm, on the, I'm on the chair now. I was on the table. 
It's smoothie and taco <laughs> night, huh? <laughs> I like smoothies and taco nights. <laughs> okay, I like the Range Rover. I'm going to take it for a spin. You can't get in it. <laughs> I look a lighter on it. No way. <laughs> It is something for you to work on. They they did just uh, release a vehicle uh, support for spatial. Yeah, I saw that. Think I'm gonna see if uh, I can do it uh, with the, that car out there and put it in another world. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to mess with it, but <laughs> and this jewelry, uh, you can move it. I try to make it interactable. The jewelry, oh, in the see. hat, in the hat, yeah, and the the beer bottles too. I don't know if you can do wearables in facial. Able to pick that bottle up. Uh oh, yeah. You can put the hat on, and we can wear. Uh, pick up the jewelry too. You said you can put the hat on. Uh huh. Yeah, you should be able to. How do you set that up? Oh, with your hand up. Oh. <laughs> you should be able to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Are you in a headset, Tanu, or are you on a computer? Computer. Okay. John, are you on a headset or are you on a computer? Um, I'm on a computer. I'm in a browser. Yeah, you can pick it up. You should be able to pick it up. It's supposed to be a, like interactable. Yeah, I'm not getting now that's coming out. Of it. Yeah. Okay. Get that one over there. It should hmm. be about. I think I put four or five on that chair. That's about one, two, there's four. And each chair should have a hot spot. A hot seat. I want to call it a hot seat. <laughs> oh, more work. Double click and went through the wall. <laughs> so I guess that collider didn't work. <laughs> I guess not. Well, nope. This one does. Oh, it's right there. Okay, but it's, yeah, it's not showing up over there. Huh. Yeah, I don't know why I can't pick these up. I've got a couple objects that I've, I've made that I can pick up. And I can do it in the browser. I don't know why I'm not picking these up. Yeah, I think, you know, you can't pick up the, the food. <laughs> With the beer bottles, you should be able to pick up. Can you show me uh, you wearing the hat, though? Let me see. I'm behind you. Oh, I turned the wrong way. <laughs> my camera was facing you. Is it on? Oh, I'm not seeing it's, it. It's kind of in you, but... Uh... Yeah, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> they just kind of balance it on there. It's a yeah, it's a NFT that I won at one of the quests in here. Oh, okay. And I yeah, I was given this and that um piece of jewelry. It, yeah. So I wanna are we gonna do quests? Oh, you don't know that in VR building. Um learn how to build worlds with quests in it. No, I I don't think he's gonna address that. Uh you might okay. be able to if you get on the Discord 
and just ask uh, in general. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are interested that'll learn it with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, in the world building, we try to stick to things that can transfer to all all platforms and not oh, things that are gotcha. very specific. Okay. Okay. So Marie, you, you eating a burrito over there? <laughs> She must be gone again. What you say? So, no, I will not. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> I'll see you all next week. All right, Don. Take, right, take care. Yeah, take Bye. care. Thank Bye. You. Bye. So Tanu, does she turn into a video camera and then she turns into herself? How does that work? Uh, if you you at the bottom uh you see the camera item where you can take a, a photo record a video or go into filming mode oh, she's going into yeah. filming mode oh okay it's the only way in spatial that you can fly that i know of and oh. so that way she can position herself wherever she gets the best shot okay neat okay So I have a karaoke world I want to bring in here, but I'm trying to find, I guess, YouTube. I don't know how you do it. Do a compilation of different songs. I don't know how we're going to do that. Figure that out to make that work or get it to work. The karaoke world? Uh-huh. I want to be able to bring it, you know, through your browser. I like the YouTube. They have karaoke songs with the music okay. and um, the words. But I need to be able to, I'm thinking, put them together and then I guess figure out how somebody can pick them and then it'll come and have it to come on. That's what I don't know how mm. to do. Yeah, that's going to take some scripting, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, well, I was wondering how they, those those people did, like, um, what's his name? Um. Duke's player and then Luminosity. How did they put their karaoke stuff together? Is that a karaoke world in spatial already? It's probably is, but I don't know. Mine is not. I haven't put it in there yet. I'm still working on the the beanbag chairs. <laughs> I put beanbag chairs in the breakout rooms. And I wanted um the breakout rooms, I want to figure out how I can make sure. If you're not in that room, you shouldn't hear the karaoke. I don't know if that's possible because there are like four different breakout rooms and there's a big old karaoke room for people, a lot of people to come in. Hmm. If you can do it by space, I'm sure you can. Um, there might be other things to do to change, change the environment. There is a world, it was a game world that... Uh, hmm. We went to not too long ago, I think Tanu was with us, uh, where when you beat the world, the entire world changes. But you can still see oh. the other people that were uh -huh. in the other world. And so there's music and, and the uh, environment is just all different. And, but there's also music that you don't hear until you get into that new one. Oh, that's neat. So there's huh. there's a way to do it. I don't know how they did it, but there's a, there is a way to do it. Okay, I, maybe I'll pose that question in the spatial Discord and ask them. Somebody will probably tell me how to do it. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. I can couldn't remember the name of Village. it, but Forgotten Village. Okay, I'll write that down and go look for it. Yeah, I think it's uh, one of the featured worlds right now, so it shouldn't be too hard. If you uh, okay. uh, go, when you leave this world, if you scroll down, it's probably in that list. Okay. Well, this is one, our assignment, I thought it was due last week. <laughs> I was finished with it last week uh, for that world building class, and I was like, this one, 
it, it took uh, it took a minute because it's just different. I don't know about these floors and the walls and stuff. Uh, but it's 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 nice, meaning that it's a, a good experience, yeah. and I got some work to do with it. Figure out how yeah, to. When when you get back in Unity for the floors, they might have done it on purpose between the walls and the floors, I would say. Uh -huh. But then looking outside and those floors being different. I wonder if the inside floorboards are missing their normal texture. Oh, so, so check to okay, see if I'll it's got a normal flip texture. Flip it and see. Okay, I will definitely will do that. Okay. Yeah, it's like a and, layer or something yeah. missing. I don't know, but it's not. It doesn't appear. Don't know. Yeah, the the normal texture is what gives it the depth look, and mm -hmm. uh, you know we go into that, and I've got a, a video going over what each type of texture adds to the to the model okay so by the end of the course you'll you'll completely understand what a normal texture can do so when you say normal texture are you meaning the normal map or the um texture that you would put in like normal the uh the roughness of a bump map or whatever or are you talking about something different um, it, it is all those that specifically called the normal texture, okay. Uh, okay. which when you're in, let me see if I can pull up an example to tell you more specifically. I know I can't screen share right now, but. All right, so you've got your albedo and that's the, uh -huh. the regular colors and how things look. Uh -huh. And then you've got the metallic. And then you've got a normal map. And then okay. the normal texture is what goes in that normal map. Okay. I'll look to see about that one. See if hopefully it's included it in might, the package. <laughs> yeah. And if even if it's not, the 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 walls uh almost certainly have one looking at them. Let me or even outside you said I might need it should be yeah, there's no not matching the outside it's a different one there is definitely a normal map on these on these walls okay I can if see not that. i might need to just change it to change the wood into one that would have because i do have a lot of um textures floor textures i can change it if i needed to yeah. okay all right well thank you john Need that yep. feedback. You're welcome. All right. Well, I'm going to find it. Other where you were talking about. For a little bit. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. And um, I'll be doing I'll be doing the uh, office hour again here in about half an hour. Okay. If you want right. to come in and we can look at it together. All right. Okay. All right, Tenua. I'll see you later. All right. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit. I like that, though. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed like it was a little bit slow, but I was able to fill it in. Because... <laughs> Um, no, I, I think I think we're good.